What is up YouTube and welcome back. Finally making another video. And today we're going to be having hockey talks with some NHL 20 beta gameplay in the background. This is not a live con. This is a game I played yesterday as we scored in the first shot. So today I'm going to be talking about the Rangers signings of Jacob Truba and Pavel Buchnevich. And then also, I didn't finish this game. This guy actually rage quit. Give it a little spoiler. So, I'm going to see if I could get all my thoughts into these two players. And then I might give a little my first impressions of NHL 20. Because I've played, I think, so far 50, like 14 games and I've been 13-1. and one. So, I've had a pretty good time in this beta. So, let's start with first the Pavel Buchnevich contract. So I think a couple days ago, Buchnevich has signed a two-year, $6.5 million contract. That is a 3.25 AAV for Buchnevich. It's a bridge deal, and it's a really good bridge deal. I think I stated in one of my other hockey talks that the Rangers should not bridge deal any other restricted free agents, like Buchnevich, Lemieux, and D'Angelo. Lock them up for, like, like if the Rangers... Locked up Buchnevich for five years at 3.25, but that would have been a home run. But I think the Rangers wanted to lock him up, but I think I read something that said that Buchnevich wanted the two-year deal. I think Buchnevich wanted the bridge deal because if he, he probably thinks he could elevate his game because he, it seemed like he has been. You know, his second year he had 43 points. This year he would have had 40 points if he wasn't injured, and he hit 20 goals. So... He probably thinks, I think I could get to 50 points. I think I get to 30 goals. You know, maybe playing with Panarin and Spanish on the top line, he could maybe even hit 70 points. You never know. I, I'm just, I don't really think maybe like around 50 points at least. It would be awesome for him to hit 30 goals too. So he probably thinks, let me get this two year deal and then let me elevate. Let me just see if I could dominate, play well, say back to back 50 point seasons, 20 goal seasons. Um,. Maybe then he could sign like a five-year, $5 million, or a five-year, $5.5 million contract, just a little bit more than what he's making because it seems like he thinks that he can make a lot more. So, I would, like I said, it's a great, good cap hit. Uh, I think we're over the salary, so maybe expect a move or two. I think the buyout period ends Wednesday, so there might be a move. I'm recording this on Monday. So there might be a move, maybe a move right now, but it could be a move sooner than later. So, uh, yeah, so I really like the contract. It's all, I think it's a great, yeah, great price. I mean, the lot of Solomon is getting paid $4 million, and he's he's good, but I think Buchevic is a whole new level. And did you see, look at that goal I just scored. <laughs> the, 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 now, like, when you're behind the net, you sh you could shoot it off the back of the goalie. It's crazy. Some of these new animations and stuff, I'm in love with NHL 20. I think this guy, like, did, just did not know how to skip replays, so maybe we'll see a replay here. Yeah, he played the puck. I got it with his... Oh, damn it. He did skip that. He played the puck. I got it with his and I just put a shot on that, and I actually shot it off the back of his... Off the back of Carhartt's skate, and it went in. So, I'm glad we got Buchnevich because there were talks that he was on the trading block, but that would have not have cleared any cap. So now Buchnevich is looking like he'll definitely be on the first or second line. It seems like it's going to be Panarin, Zibanejan. It depends if they go maybe Kako or Buchnevich. I think Crowder will be on the second line. Like I said, we're going to be, we're going to have a two, our two lines are going to be really good. I mean, our whole, our whole offense is deep. But if you have the two lines of, say, Panarin, Sabanajan, Booch, and then you go, let's say Kreider, Heel, Kako. That's awesome. Then fourth line, third line, you could go. Maybe you could go like Anderson, Howden, Lemieux, and then fourth line you could go. Maybe if you keep Strom, then Fost and say Nieves or something like that. I'm just kind of just kind of like spitballed. I didn't really think about that, but. Yeah, so our offense is looking really deep, and with Buchnevich for the next two years, and, you know, if he elevates his game, maybe produces more than Kreider, then maybe Kreider will be on his way out, but we'll have to see about that. So now, on to the Jacob Truba contract, and oh man, this was a big one. Jacob Truba, I think, I don't remember, one, maybe a week or two, a week and a half ago, signed a seven-year, 
$56 million contract that is an AAV of $8 million a year. A lot of people, I mean, it seemed like Ranger fans didn't really mind it. I didn't really mind it. It's just, this is what I hope. But a lot of people were saying he was overpaid. But when I look at Jacob Truba, he's a big two-way defense and who just had a 50-point season. How much would you, how much would, who just made, who just, who just came off a cap hit of 5.5? So for a guy who just had a 50-point season, how much would you like to pay him? Probably 7, 7.5. So I would say the Rangers only overpaid for him for only a million, but that's because they wanted him so bad because Truby, they wanted to give Truby what he wanted so he would resign with them because they knew that maybe with their system, they know, they knew that he's in his prime of his career, he's 25. They knew that, you know, he's got probably plenty more to bring. So, my hope for Truba is, because I just feel like, I feel like people, like Ranger, Ranger fans are getting their hopes up. Like, Truba was coming off like 30 point, 20 point, 30 point seasons. He did score like almost, I think, 10 goals every season. This year he had 50 points, but you got to look at the team he was around. But I don't think that's, all, I don't think that was all, just because of the team. You know, I didn't watch much Jet games last year, so I don't know. But if Jacob Truba for the next seven years could produce 40 points, not even 50 points. If he could go 40 points, 40 points, 40 points, 50 points, 40 points, like that is a home run. Because when was the last consistent defenseman who had 40 points? Maybe McDonough. I think McDonough had a couple 40 points, 30 points. But if Truba could get like five goals... You know, 40 assists, 5 goals, 30 assists, something like that. I, I just think it's going to be awesome. Like, if he could score or just continually get that 40-point mark for a defenseman, perfect. And maybe if Brady Shea could elevate his game. I mean, Brady Shea's been fine. Brady Shea back-to-back, like, 20-point seasons. But he's scoring quite a bit of goals. So, if Brady Shea could maybe get up to, like, that high 30-point season, that would be awesome. So, like I said, it, could be, it might be a slight overpay. But only by, like, a million, to be honest, which you, like... How much do you think? Like, I'm just trying to think. And also, like, people are saying Panarin's overpaid, but it's like a new market, and plus Panarin took less money to play for the Rangers, so you just got to think about that. But I don't really care. I'm glad we got two two of these players. Both for the next seven years for this new core. So it's gonna definitely going to be a fun Rangers season next year. And uh, for... I think that's really all i got to say. Nothing really. Of course, uh, Kako signed his entry level. Nothing to really talk about there. It's just a simple nine hundred twenty-five thousand a year. Um, I'm just trying to think. Am I missing anything? I think Latiri signed a one-year contract, and this leaves Brendan Lemieux and Tony D'Angelo to be signed. So I'm projecting maybe like a three-year contract for Lemieux because you got to look at Jesper Foss. Jesper Foss got three years at one point eight. So, for like a third or fourth line guy who the Rangers, I think, love and other teams love too, I could see them giving him like a, maybe if he wants a bridge deal too, because like they might give him around 2 million, maybe 2.5 AAV, I would just think 2 million, just because, but if he thinks that he could like hit 20 goals or something, like turn into like Michael Furlan, maybe he'll take a bridge deal and then, you know, maybe then he could move that cap hit up to like 3 million or something like that. But I think he's going to want to, I think, I just have a feeling he would like to stay long term. So maybe he would sign like a four year, 2.2 or a five, or maybe a three year, something like that. I'd say anything with Tony D'Angelo. Maybe like a, he actually might want a bridge deal too. But I just saw someone maybe trading him wouldn't be the bad, best, uh, wouldn't be the worst decision. Just because Rangers have so much right hand defensive now. It's crazy. With Fox now. But I don't know. We'll have to see. All right. So we have. We're running on nine minutes. We have four minutes left in this video. So, I think I talked everything I want to talk about with the Rangers. I think I'll talk about my first impressions of NHL 20. It took some time getting used to the new shooting, but I actually, I like it a lot. You know, obviously it's the beta, so, I mean, I actually kind of understood that in previous betas. Poke checks, you'll get a lot of penalties. I don't think I took one in this gameplay. But NHL 20, is I've actually had a blast playing this beta. I love the new shooting and, you know, the, it just seems like the skating changed. 
I haven't really noticed the transitions much when you get the pass. I've noticed a couple times, but not too much. But it just seems like the skating, like it's the same skating. It just seems like maybe there's like a little burst of speed, you know, at times. But I can't wait for franchise mode in this. With the Rangers being probably a playoff team, I think I'm still going to do them. Just to play with like Kraftsoft, Fox, and all of them. I'm not hoping they actually, but I might have to wait because I don't know if they're going to have the rosters finalized. Because I remember when Buchnevich and VZ came in the league, the Rangers didn't have them, or NHL, excuse me, didn't have them until uh, like the second roster update, so I had to wait. So, um, yeah, so I'm really liking this game and I can't wait for NHL 20. I'll probably get EA access so I can bring some content early. And Madden 20 is coming out this Friday, so I'll be, I'm already bought that, so I'll be maybe starting up a franchise. And with NHL 19 news, Oklahoma Outlaws, I haven't made a video of them in a while. I think I may, might make one more playoff run, and then I'll call it for that series. It was a really fun series. We got a cup out of an expansion team. I don't know if I should bring them over to NHL 20 or should I make a new expansion team. Maybe I should do Seattle. I don't know. We'll have to see. But we got two minutes left in this gameplay. Maybe I'll commentate over some of it. Actually, I don't think I scored another goal. I think this guy took a tripping penalty, then he left. But uh, I'm just trying to think. Anything else I could talk about? Yeah, Madden 20 will be coming. Uh, I don't know what team I will be using in a franchise, but like I just watched like some gameplay, and Lamar Jackson looks ridiculous in it. What was this move? Oh, this was funny. I did a flip. Carter Hart played it out, and he tapped it in. <laughs> I actually thought the Mestikov kicked it in, but uh, it was actually Sanheim actually hit it in. I went for the flip, and then he played it, and Sanheim just tips it in. That was funny. Yeah, you got to be careful when you play with the goalie now. It actually, they made it a little easier for the offense to get it. Because like, this guy wouldn't skip. I was clicking A to skip, and he won a while. He just watched that. Cinematic. I like the new replays and the new announcer. Obviously, I have the gameplay muted, but the new announcer is pretty cool too. I'll probably have a full, a live com gameplay of me soon. Maybe I'll record today or tomorrow. It depends, but we're Let's see what he's gonna do. Center. This guy centered a lot, and I saw it coming. And I'm going to pick it up with Ryan Strom up to Brendan Lemieux. Lemieux. Oh, the beret. I don't think I even mean, meant to do that. I meant to just do the windmill, but for some reason the beret. All right. And I think I've talked about everything I want to talk about. And we will. this video is going to be ending in 10 seconds. So I hope you guys enjoyed. And I will see you in the next one. Peace.